I can bring you in warm, or I can bring you in cold. Yeah. Returning to Galaxy Far Far Away, or in short, an almost dead franchise, let's talk about another remake. So, when opening the box and closely observing the figure, I was surprised by the changes that were implemented compared to his season 2 predecessor as just looking side to side. You know what they say. Once you go black, you're gonna need a wheelchair. As the best car armor that was all shiny chrome has been bleached out with a gunmetal gray color scheme that adds differentiation to the overall figure and actually looks kinda sick. This is not mentioning the armor in itself as the large and bulky armor seen in the original release has been completely redone as the armor seen in the latest version forgoes the excess bulk for one that is more sleek and fitting to Mando's body, or in layman's terms, something that is screen accurate. This is not mentioning the right shoulder armor with the rhinoceros emblem on it which was a pain in the ass to attach and far worse to make it stick on the original. The current iteration seems to have completely remedied the situation as the plate is firmly attached onto the shoulder and simply refuses to fall off. A far contrast to Bandai's monster arts line, but Bandai wasn't just contempt at improving the sculpt as they also went full in on improving the posability as the simplistic but rigid arm movement was completely redone with a butterfly joint, allowing Mando here to not only be better at using firearms compared to the butterfly less John Wick, yet, but also aid in Mando being able to wield the dog saber to slice and dice his way through melee wielding foes, but just don't place him next to a pencil wielding foe. Fucking pencil. But the leg armor also underwent a redesign as the right thigh plate has been replaced by a more rudimentary design. This is not mentioning the left knee cover in which Mando seems to have adopted after seeing them in action for the extra knee kick. And looking further down are those bounty hunter boots that rather than the unicolor on the original release, the season 3 variant has added some grey for the extra drip. But talking about drip, Mando seems to have taken such concept to heart as he forsake the old and oversized cape that was all over the place for a black and sleek cape that is all tucked in for a drip that's akin to the Lisa Al Ghaib. And an unfortunate side regarding the video format is that you can't convey the sense of touch as the cloth here rather than the simple fabric seen on either the original Mando or Darth Vader seems to be composed of a higher end cloth that adds extra class to Mando and makes him the true main protagonist of the Star Wars franchise. When looking at accessories that were accompanied by Mando, they are a lot. Firstly, they're the replacement hands. Besides the fist, there are your trigger hands to wield Mando's blasters, large open hands, semi open hands, larger trigger hands to wield the rifle, holding hands to wield the dog saber, and a thumbs up hands to again wield the dog saber. When talking about Mando's arsenals, there is your pistol esque blaster that is more or less the same with your metallic gun grey paint job with the wooden brown handle, but the silver muzzle does make a difference. But for longer ranges, there is Mando's trusty rifle that, with the larger barrel, fork like muzzle, and a wooden stock, makes Mando a true marksman, but nowhere near the levels of the Doom Slayer. But there's the sling that, by disassembling the rifle, and replacing the main body with the sling attached one, removing a smaller piece on the body string, attach the hole on the back of the belt, and attaching the other end of the string in its place, you have Traveling Mando with his rifle slung onto his back, which with the holster on the belt is a big improvement compared to the original release, but still a pain in the ass to assemble. So I'm not gonna pull off that form again. Then what is a Mandalorian without their iconic jetpack in which with the gunmetal color scheme can be easily attached to the back? Then there are these two separate blast effects that after shoving them in recreates Mando when he's in flight, but nothing new though. But maybe the most important accessory out of the bunch is the now iconic and broken 
signature weapon of Mandalore, the Darksaber, in which with both the blade on and off handle retaining a dark blue colour scheme that is different to your typical lightsaber and more akin to that of a katana. But the blade is a completely different beast as the round and translucent blade found in the lightsabers used by the Jedi are nowhere to be seen and in its place is a slim and katana shaped blade but all black with the white vein-esque patterns embedded on that truly makes Mando and the Saber here akin to a samurai. Wake the fuck up, samurai. We have a city to burn. But seriously though, it is a cool design and looks extra cool on fake characters. Then there's the shotgun mic that I don't know what it does, so... Moving on, Mando as being a Latino man with Beskar armor might not sound as tall compared to your typical Caucasian counterparts, but to my surprise stand side by side to your fellow organic contemporaries and only a midget next to your half an extra crispy man. This is in due to Mando standing at 15 centimeters or 5.9 inches tall. There's Mando side by side next to a dual personality disorder times two, the big G, and Boba Fett. As explained before, Bandai has this time around spared no expenses when re-engineering the articulation this remake as the results show. While the head can move side to side, up and down movement is limited by the cape. The torso can slightly move up and down, side to side. Due to the newly added butterfly joints, arm movement has seen a vast improvement. Just don't expect Figma quality. The joints, as being a double-sided joint, can bend almost 180 degrees. Hand movement is more or less the same. Didn't realize, but Mando now can do a complete spread. <laughs> The knees does allow for more than a 90 degrees bend, the feet can move up and down, side to side, and a toe bend. But what is a father figure if not accompanied by his child, and who other than Star Wars' counterpart to Kyubei? Similar to the Mandalorian, Grilgo here is another remake as Bandai again gave it their all as there are significant upgrades on the new model as this time around, a frog-like giant head has been cast aside for a smaller and as the wrinkles have been less emphasized in their place to kawaii eyes. This is not mentioning the ears that this time around can move up and down, being able to replicate when Grogu is either sad or filled with joy. But it will be a lie if the improvements end here as this time around, rather than what Ever. This is, covered with a flimsy cloth, Grogu possesses an outfit composed of hard plastic embedded with extra wrinkles alongside the sand-esque color scheme that broke my former conception that cloth is superior to plastic regarding outfits. When looking at what Grogu is accompanied by, there's this <laughs> that retains a decent paint job as shown through the various color schemes, the lift and dissolving paint job that is reminiscent of the original trilogy, and a slight weathering apply. And if you want to place this ball in midair, there is this mini stand that you assemble and shove in. But if you want to place Grogu inside the ball, you softly remove the lid and god damn the inner details are impressive. Place a small piece in its place and place the sitting version of Baby Yoda inside in order to recreate that oh so kawaii smiling Grogu. And talking about a smiling Grogu, there is this alternative Grogu with his knees bent and sitting down to place him inside the bowl. And if we look closely, Grogu here actually has a shit eating grin that with the white teeth and red lips makes Grogu either a subject to be adored or a potential victim of the youngling slayer. But if you want the shit eating grin on the standing body or vice versa, you easily decapitate the head and place it on the other body. When looking at how tall both Grogu are, no! let's just say it isn't even worth the measurement. Here's Grogu next to Whoopi Killers, Bipolar Disorder, The One True King, and Mando. When talking about Grogu's range of possibility, how could this tiny body provide any movement? And you're right, the ears can move up and down, the head can move side to side, and a slight up and down, slight arm movement, and a slight hand movement. So regarding Grogu's range of possibility, nothing at all. So, to sum up, the SH Figure's latest edition of The Mandalorian and Grogu from the third season is a fantastic release as Bandai seems to have listened to their criticisms from their past releases and improved upon it. The newly added paint job that blends organically with the sculpt, 
the enhanced range of posability, the numerous accessories that are accompanied with Mando, and the upgraded Grogu that is so... The only gripe I have is the sling on the rifle that while way better than the previous iteration, it is still a pain in the ass to place. But even with such predicaments, this is a great figure and if you're either a fan of Mando or Star Wars overall, which is a dying breed lately, I would highly recommend this figure. In doing so, I would give the SH figures of Mandalorian Grogu from the third season a ranking of an A.